thank you for joining us today for this episode of What Sam Said. We ask that you please like and share and also go to our website, www.samuelwaynewest.com. There you will be able to watch previously recorded videos of What Sam Said, as well as order our book, A Promise Kept. Now, on last week, we highlighted some of the things that we needed to be mindful of in terms of our position and the role that we have to play. 2 Corinthians 4 and 13 says, We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken, we also believe, therefore we speak. 1 John 4 and 17 says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we. One of the points mentioned last week was the importance of having like-spirited people in our lives, not just like-minded people. Folks who can speak life into your spirit. In the book of John, chapter 4, verses 13, 14, and 15, in the common English Bible, Jesus said unto the woman at the well, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water that I will give will never be thirsty again. The water that I give will become, in those who drink it, a spring of water that bubbles up into eternal life. That means just because the living water is offered doesn't mean that all of us will drink. For Jesus said to them that drink it, it will become a spring of water. It means there's something that we have to do. Sometimes we reach for folks in our lives who can only satisfy our thirst temporarily. By that I mean, have you ever had a conversation with someone and you left just as empty a void as you did prior to having the conversation? Have you ever eaten a meal that, that filled you up at the time, but you found yourself hungry a few hours later? Have you ever found yourself feeling some kind of way about a circumstance or a situation and had to muster up a praise? You didn't feel like praising God. You, you didn't feel like worshiping God, but you knew that you needed to get out of the state of mind that you were in. You were not there yet, but you knew unless you drew upon those living waters on the inside of you that you might be there longer than what you had anticipated. Have you ever been in a situation where it didn't work out like you prayed? Instead of delivering encouragement to a family member, a loved one, or a friend, you found yourself delivering a eulogy. Have you been there? I was riding home from work about a week after one of my best friends from college had transitioned and I had delivered the eulogy and, and as I was riding back home, I was thinking about some things and praising and worshiping God, but, but a week or so had passed and I was leaving work and, and I didn't feel like worshiping. I, I didn't feel like praising. I just felt like, oh God, you know, but I prayed and, and I thought I believed when I prayed and, and, and he still passed. And I know some of you've been there with family members and friends, but on that particular day, I was like, oh God, I, I, I need to, I, I need to be encouraged. You know, I, I, who, who going to encourage the encourage? I'm like, well, who going to preach to me when I need someone to, to give me a word of encouragement? And, and as the tears began to flow down my face and I started thinking of, of, of prior experiences and, and journeys and the conversation that we had prior to his transition, you know, the tears just slowly started to, to come and I, I, I never verbalized anything. I was just having this conversation in my heart to the Lord and I turned on the radio like, let me see if I can you know find a song and Tasha Cobbs Leonard, Leonard was singing get ready for overflow and I, I can still hear the words you know eyes haven't seen and, and ears haven't heard the kind of blessing that's about to fall on you that, that that victory is here and because that victory is here kick defeat out the door that, that God is about to get ready to do a new thing get ready for overflow and I listened to the words and I was crying and I was listening and I was just, you know, sometimes, you, you know, you just glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. You know, you, 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 you putting on the garment of praise and I'm like, I'm going to get out a while. It was like glory, hallelujah and hallelujah. And that's why I asked you earlier, have you ever had to muster up a praise? Have you ever been there needing God to comfort you and give you peace all the while folks reaching out to you? for you to encourage them. Have you ever cried out to God, well, who can I text? Who, who can the preacher call? Who, who, who can I draw upon just to kind of, you know, send a word for me? Maybe if I just send 
a hello emoji to so and so and so that they'll respond and say how you doing so I can say man I, I didn't need a word from the Lord or maybe if I call so and so and so God maybe they'll maybe they'll speak a word of encouragement to you. I'm just sitting in the car and listen to Tasha and she didn't pass singing because I, I put it on the, you know, the first time they sing but when you uh, put it back and the second time it's singing so she was singing and I was you know, just get in there. I was like, God, you know, I'm ready for overflow. You know, I'm getting ready to see something I've never seen. You ever been there? You know, you 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 grieving like everybody else. It's like, God, I need to, I need to hear from someone. And as as I continue praying on the inside of me, never speaking a word, just before I was ready to start texting and calling folks and trying to work some things out on my own, the telephone rang and I'm like, Devil, I bind you. This is a distraction. This is a distraction. And it rang again, and I went over and I looked at them. The number, and I was like, "Oh, this is, you know, Pastor Jeff, you know, my brother, my brother from Detroit. Let me, let me just pick up the phone. You know, maybe, maybe I can help him. Maybe I can encourage myself by encouraging him." And shortly after the conversation started, he just kind of went into, kind of saying some things over me, and I was like, "You know, God, forgive me, for, forgive me for trying to work this out on my own when you already had orchestrated divinely for the right person that I needed." To, to call me and, and to speak something in me that satisfied my spirit and, and my soul. And, and, and I just, I was impatient and I thought about, you know, from the natural standpoint, I can just hear God saying, you know, Sam, just wait. I heard you. I heard your cry from the inside. I, I got my angels working on something for you, brother. I, I got a meal prepared just for you. They had to go to the store and the line was longer than usual. usual. And then the, 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 the card swipe machine wasn't working, but just just hold on, hold on. I, they, they got the food. They had to go on 285 and there was an accident. So I had to recalculate and send them another route, but they're coming. I heard you. I got the person that you need to satisfy you, but then he had to work 30 minutes overtime, but he's coming just wait. He has an answer for you. Psalms 27 and 14 says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The Passion Translation version says it this way of Psalms 27, 13 and 14. Yet I totally trust you to rescue me one more time so that I can see once again how good you are while I am still alive. Here's what I've learned through it all. Don't give up. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. Be brave and courageous and never lose hope. Yes, keep on waiting for he would never disappoint you. The meal was being prepared. My answer was on the way. But the cornbread just had to get a little brown on the top. Sam, just wait a couple of minutes. I heard you. I, I, I Just wait. I had to wait until I had the situation just where it needed to be. I got you. I had to set up some divine orchestrations on your behalf, but don't give up. Don't be impatient. Sam, I know what you need to thrive, not just to survive. Sam, I know the difference between sustenance and nutrition, and I know what you need at this moment. You trying to find someone to sprinkle a little water on you. I'm trying to get you in position for overflow. Just wait. J just move a little closer. You got to be close to get wet. You seeking sustenance, something to make you full for the moment, a temporary fix. When I, the Lord your God, have a chef preparing a spiritual gourmet meal tailored just for you. What Sam said, before you start eating at everybody's table, before you just pick up the phone and just call somebody because you think they got a word for you, just wait. You better wait because your gift and your call requires you to chew, to meditate just a little bit longer on this word before you swallow now, meditation is to the inner man what digestion is to the outer man. As he is, so are we. Someone on the internet gave this example between the two. They said, sustenance deals with food keeping someone alive, while nutrition is more about the healthy properties of food. He said, eating only rice and nothing else for a whole year will provide sustenance but it would not provide good nutrition. What Sam said, the widow woman who may have been called to sustain you in your drought may not be the one who was called to nourish you when it's time for your overflow. What Sam said, nourishment is what you need. You settling for sustenance. You're in survival mode. You, you dress desperate. You looking for some bread and water. What Sam said, I was crying out to God from the inside. I was about to eat some potty meat and crackers. 
and God had someone in the kitchen preparing a word for me, my favorite meal, Aunt Dot turkey wings, Aunt Bobby ass three times clean barbecue neck bones, Uncle Charles and Casey's barbecue ribs, Betty Ruth's collard greens and butter beans, Nikki's almost world famous casserole with a side of meatballs, Cousin Connie's whole cake cornbread and some fried fat back, Aunt Stella's peach cobbler and A.T.'s peach pies and sweet potato pies with a side of ice cream. That was my favorite meal. What I like and what you like and what you need might be different. You might be saying why he wanted that meal. That, that, that's the meal. That's the word that I needed for me. God was preparing what I needed to provide nourishment for me. And I'm not trying to get someone just to speak sustenance under me that's not going to last. It's going to be a temporary fix. I needed that perfect meal, the one that was going to remind me of growing up with my grandmama. The one that was going to remind me when I moved to Atlanta of getting up on Sunday morning and finding out what my mama had cooked and driving all the way back to Fort Valley with my Tupperware because Connie was going to be bringing her party. My mama had her party. They had reached out to the freezer and thawed out some food. So I knew when I left, I was going to be rolling off the table, but I was going to be full and I was going to be satisfied. That's the kind of word that God wants to get to us. Not some temporary fix, but something that's going to nourish us and not just sustain us. And that's what he was telling me that morning. That's where I was. I was like, Lord, I, I need to hear from you. I need to, to leave this table full and satisfied. I still remember the conversation with Brother Jeff when he started to pour on me and in me. I can hear him saying, Sam, everybody can fight, brother, but can they win? Sam, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Sam, walk like the giant you are, brother. Go up at once and possess the land. Whatever that land may be for you, whatever the perceived giants are that you face, he said, go up at once. Whatever you're going through, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and go get your stuff. He has already ordained it for your possession. So by, by this time, the tears coming, but they're a different set of tears. I'm shouting on the inside. By this time, I get it. By this time, I'm like, okay, God, I get it. I'm full. I'm satisfied. I'm ready now to speak life into somebody else. Thank you so much for hearing my silent cry. Thank you for giving me a word that was going to bring a source of deliverance for me. What Sam said, who do you have speaking in your life into a time of need? Luke 1, 39 through 45 reminds us to surround ourselves with people who can speak to us. The Bible tells us that when Mary entered the house of Zacharias and Elizabeth said, As soon as the voice of your salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. The message version says the moment the sound of your greeting entered my ears, the babe in my womb skipped like a lamb for sheer joy. What is Sam saying? Who do you have speaking to you, on you, and in the inside of you that is causing your dream to jump for joy? Who do you have speaking on the inside of you that's causing your mourning to turn into dancing again? The satirian servant in Matthew 8 said, Lord, I am not worthy for you to enter into my house. Just speak. The word only and my servant shall be healed. There's power in speaking. You need people around you that when they speak, what you need to hear literally leaps on the inside of you. Who do you have saying, I believe in you? Who do you have saying, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? Who do you have saying, it's your winning season, brother, and everything that is attached to you is going to win in the name of Jesus? Who do you have him saying, I, I, I've seen him move. Move the mountains and I believe that he's going to move them again. Who's saying unto you that he made a way when there was no way? Just think back on the goodness of God. And I believe that he's going to make a way again. The Bible says to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Isaiah 42 and 6 says, I have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and keep you. Now there's a difference between holding on. And being held, when you hold on, you're depending upon your physical strength. But when you're being held, you're depending upon the strength and the might and the grace of Almighty God. Psalm 88 and 2 says, Let my prayer come before thee, incline thine ear unto my cry. What am I saying? That he hears you. He hears those silent cries. And we just let him divinely orchestrate our answer. Then we will be able to leave his presence full, complete, lacking nothing in the name of Jesus. I didn't say a word, yet he heard the desires of my heart. 
Isaiah 65 and 24 says in the International Standard Version, before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I'll hear. The International Children Bible says, I will provide for their needs before they ask. I will help them while they are still asking for help. While I'm still crying out to him, while I'm asking for something, I ain't really know what I needed. He was preparing someone to speak what I needed so that I could leave full. How would you know when he speaks through them? Because that what you need to hear will start leaping on the inside of you. In the name of Jesus, what he says to one, he says to all, go get your stuff. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen, amen, and amen. Just a word of advice to you before we end this series today. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I've spoken to many people who say that it, it wasn't the first time that they caught the spirit of the message through what Sam said, or even when they read the book of A Promise Kept. But it was that second time and that third time. And remember, I said that you might not need a word today, but when you hear it, just kind of put it in the freezer. So when you need a word, you can just kind of take it out and throw it out and be able to feast upon it. So what I'm saying is listen to it again. Then go back and listen to it again and then share it with someone. So that way when, when someone starts talking to you, you'll be like, no, they're just talking now. They're just talking out the side of their neck. But when someone starts speaking to you and it resonates with you on the inside, then to God be the glory. Thank you again for joining us for this episode of What Sam Said, As He Is, So Are We, Part 4. Thank you again for liking this message, subscribing to our YouTube channel, and sharing it with family and friends. And please don't forget to go to the website www.samuelwaynewest.com and order your copy of A Promise Kept, and you can order from Amazon. God bless you, and get ready for overflow. <laughs>